Hello, Isobuddies and Jaglones and however you identify. So, um, fans, um, devoted followers, disciples, Isopod Life. Uh, this is my custom shirt that I love from my sister-in-law. I don't know how she found this and did all this. Um, if you haven't figured out, we are having technical difficulties. Um, <coughs> Ryan can't get his mic or camera to connect to StreamYard. So we're going to see how that works. Uh, he is here backstage um, and can probably comment in the live stream, the live comments, and answer questions for the time being. Um, but today we're going to talk about citizen science, which is a little awkward because I usually rely on my <laughs> guest for this information. So um, I didn't do very much because Ryan had a whole presentation. So um, what I'm going to tell you is what I know, and we can go from there. So I've had a couple guests on that know their stuff about citizen science. So we've had Ryan, we've had Carl Callwood, um, we've had Josh Kristinat, um, we have had uh, Joe Wilson, who I think is an actual scientist. He's an actual entomologist, which kind of doesn't count. Um, we've had Lars, um, whose name I can't remember, his last Lars Meyer. Um, we've had several, we've had more than a few, so at least a half a dozen. Um, we've had people that I think, oh God, Biggs is here. Um, Biggs, I think you scared Ryan off. He's, uh, he's having some problems with his equipment. So, um, all right. So he's going to try, maybe he can use his phone. I don't know. Um, but we are going to find out how to do this. He's a springtail expert, not a technology expert. So I'm, I'm going to text him live from my phone. Look at that. Look at that kid right there. She's cuter than your kid. I don't know much else. My dungeon master, my gunter, the goons. Um, so the goons is ready to go. My little sidekick. Um, and I am sexy. Thank you so much. It's, it's this half beard, this quarter beard that's coming in. Um, so you know that I'm all man. This is like three months, <laughs> two months, I think. Uh, I did trim this action up here because it's getting a little silly. Um, anyway, enough about my beard. So some of the things, uh, Biggs probably has advice for this too. Um, yeah, she'll, even if you had kids, Jedi Monkey, she'd be cuter than your kids. Um, I just, she's that kid that makes you want to have kids. So yeah, and we're off the rails. Uh, there's a lot of citizen science with kids too. Maybe Biggs can correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, iNaturalist is a great place to meet up with actual scientists and other people with like, not to disrespect, I'm not trying to disrespect scientists, but feet on the ground. Um, we cover a lot more ground as hobbyists. And if we, you know, keep our um, notes together, compile our notes, kind of work together. Blastcat, how are you? Um, like I said before, Ryan's not here yet. He's working on it. Oh, his phone isn't trying to, he's, he's using his phone. So that's our backup, and that's not working, apparently. Streamers having issues. I had a lot of problems logging on today, too. Um, so iNaturalist.com. There are other sites. Uh, you can find message boards. Um, I found one through uh, for my ants, formaculture.com. That's what kind of started me into ants. Um, and there's lots. There's so many people that are... Uh, Amateurs, amateur scientists, which is a weird, uh, it's a weird thing to say. I feel like because hobbyists really drive the hop, they drive the science behind it. Um, I feel like if no one was interested in it, it would be hard to push through, hard to uh, um, justify the things you're doing. So with that said, like we've had some really good things with, um, what is this? Hold on one second. Your browser can't access your devices. Close any other apps that might be using your camera mic, then refresh the page. So, um, so his browser's not letting him log in. So, I'll try and have my Act Explorer or something. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to try this out 
Um, but yeah, there's so many ways to get into it and get involved. You can meet up with actual scientists um, somewhere like Josh has been doing. Josh Kristinat has been doing a lot as far as getting involved in labs. He has like four different jobs at different labs. Um, he submits specimens. That's a good thing to submit specimens and find a website. We're going to have some links after the show. Um, there's going to be some links down below, um, but you can find websites. It's not too hard. Like I said, I did it with ants. I did it with isopods where you can catalog where you found a specimen. Um, and it's good for you too. Like here's where I found it. I'm going to geotag it um, and, and put those coordinates there. So you know, like, okay, this is a spot where I found this species of ice spot, this species of ants, this bird, um, and go back and check on it. Then you have a good note right there in your computer on your, even Google Maps, you can tag stuff. Um, and go back and check it out. Uh, we're going to try, Justin. He's going to try a different browser now. So he's on his phone, so I don't know how difficult that would be, but um, he might be able to cut and paste the link into a different browser and see, <clears throat> hopefully. Like I said, he's a springtail clay guy. Uh, if this was clay, he would have this all the way up. Oh, Dustin's here. Good, good. I was like, your water is what? I don't have my glasses, so it's. I'll try to figure out who's here as you guys come in, roll in and out. Um, but there's so many, there's so much value to citizen science, and I feel like now more than ever, thanks to the internet, um, it's getting more respect than it does than it has. I almost said than it deserves, but that's not true. It deserves the utmost respect. Um, so, but it's getting more recognition from scientists abroad. Um, it's becoming much simpler for them to access us, for us to access them, um, <clears throat> to find out how and what they know. They can give us tips on how to do better uh, science, better research, better field uh, studies. Um, we can go out and interact, like you can take notes with, say you find an isopod species that's interacting maybe with a termite colony. You can take notes or video evidence of that. You can help log distributions of different species. So maybe a species of ant hasn't been logged in my part of Illinois before and I found it. Um, that's kind of cool, maybe, as long as it's not super invasive. So like fire ants, I wouldn't want to find fire ants up here. It'd be pretty hard for them to do that, but um, I, I would hate to find fire ants in Northern Illinois, <clears throat> almost the tip or just the tip. I'm not sure how that works. Um, anyway, yeah, so there's people all over the world that do this. I believe that, okay, Ryan's logged in twice. This one says he has a mic. Can you hear us, Ryan? Speak now or forever hold your peace. It kind of says you have a mic, Ryan. It wouldn't be our show without technical difficulties. And this is Ryan's third time on, his first time with these kind of goofy issues. I, I honestly think part of it is StreamYard because StreamYard has been acting weird. And like I said, we've had Ryan on twice before and not had any issues, except that he probably could need a computer. No, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Ryan. Oh, you're muted. I can't unmute you, but whatever it is, is muted. It wouldn't let you log in without any, oh, he's out. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Google Chrome didn't work, but I got in on DuckDuckGo and it's saying my mic is working. Uh, no, no, sorry, buddy. Let's see. Device is not connected is what I'm getting for both of those. Um, okay, we're going to kick that one out. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's going to be a short one. <laughs> so, Ryan, can you put some links up in the, um, if you can hear me, can you put the links up in the chat for folks, the links that you've compiled? Um, and maybe he's telling everybody he's sorry. Um Hold on. I know he's stressing out. He was on here with his camera, 
and then the shit hit the fan, <coughs> and then we were good. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I think I went from having the flu to having like walking pneumonia. That's what it feels like anyway. Um, sorry, my ants are trying to escape again. Any programs that are running that you don't need? Close anything else running. Look, we have tech support with Justin. We're down to six viewers. Nobody wants to just watch me talk about links that I don't have. So, um, yeah, I would say get out there, log your information, take a notebook with you. You saw kind of our kits, the ant hunting kits last week. Everybody that does that has a little notebook. They have a battery charger for their phone um, because they're really going to check their phone to see where they can take better pictures. That's like an all-in-one, right? We have miracles in our pockets. So I think that's also helped citizen science out a lot. You don't have to carry. You can, and it, it's awesome to carry a big camera rig. Um, but you don't have to, you have like great cameras in your phone now, um, lights, um, <clears throat> you can log your findings, you can geotag. There's so many options. There's so many different things you can do to make this work. So you'd be silly not to do it. Um, yeah, Dustin, we've had a few, not this bad. Usually it's me kicked out over and over and over again. Um, but I've got a new copy. We figured out how to get it back into the old, the new studio. Um, we're working out the new setup here. So I just have to logistically figure out how I'm going to move everything and reorganize my entire basement and um, reorganize just about everything that I have down here. So that's exciting, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a 100 gallon <clears throat> right here. We're going to do some citizen science in that 100 gallon. Um, without a keep. I'm a multi-species kind of guy. I like to see things interact. I like to see uh, biodiversity in my tank. It's too bad I don't have a PC. Not many options on my phone. Try th Oh, you guys can read that. So weird. So weird. Um, I would ask you to keep trying, Ryan. Keep trying, Ryan. Beautiful. Um, does anyone on now have any stories with citizen science where you've successfully reached out and talked to an actual like degree holding scientist, like with some kind of a major degree with it, because I'm still fascinated. Um, <clears throat> those are kind of my celebrities, right? So, and I don't think we put enough stress on that. So like your, and your old naturalists like David Attenborough. Um, I don't think that, what's his name? Steve Irwin. I don't think Steve Irwin had any kind of a degree. He just had superpowers. Uh, that's all he needed was his superpowers to accomplish what he did. Um, I've never before or since seen anyone so in tune with the animal kingdom. His son's pretty good. I don't know how the girl that's named after the dog is doing uh, with that, but the son is like his young clone, somehow more handsome. We got Pepsi if you're watching. We'll take your money. This is so delicious. Can't find it anywhere anymore, but it's so delicious. I'm down to like three. I have one a week. So uh, let's see. Ryan says he thinks it worked. Let's get him in. Yeah. I don't know if we can hear you. You can't hear me? Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got long hair. I'm going for that. That's what I'm shooting for. Long hair. I've been inspired. Um. It shows that you're alive, Mike. I it's showing on my end. <laughs> Maybe mic. turn up your volume on your phone. Just straight up turn up your volume. No. That work? No. No. No, man. Damn. Do you know sign language? <laughs> try a race board, maybe. <laughs> no. Let's try to share screen. See if you can share screen on there. Uh, <coughs> From your phone, I don't know how that'll work, but. I don't know how that works either. You guys can hear him? They can hear me? Maybe that's my bad. All right, Ryan, keep talking. I'm going to figure this out on my end. Hell yeah. Maybe I can't hear. Now, how do we share screens? Audio. Though? I thought that you knew how to share the screens. I have no idea. I don't have very many options here. There's nothing connected here. Okay, that's wild. Let's see. 
I am connected. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get some Bluetooth in here. That's why. Oh, now I can't hear you. Are you serious? How's that? Speak. I don't know. I can't hear you. you can't hear uh. All right. Let me try again. <laughs> This is awful. All right, so my mic, it shows that it's working for me, so I don't know. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I, awesome. Awesome. I have the weirdest awesome. direction right now. So um, <laughs> I apologize to any children that are watching right now, but it's not as weird as the one episode uh, that we that we filmed um, with, with illustrations. But uh, all right. Can everybody hear? Everybody good? Aftec's here, Guy Bob's here, Last Cat. Okay, everybody can hear you except me. Awesome. All right, why don't you take over for a little bit? Because I was my nerves are shot trying to do that and do citizen science justice. So throw it out there, Springtail. Springtail uh, Yalees. <clears throat> all right. So citizen science is kind of new to me, but Sorry, guys, I'm off my game with all 15 minutes of technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your face is red. Like, take a breath. Just woo-saw. Mindful meditation, right? Didn't we talk about that? We've talked about it. Just we have. Breathe with your gut. Take a second to, like, on purpose, breathe with your gut and not your chest. That'll get more fired up. Think about me covered in whipped cream. That calms me down. Um I just lost three subs. <laughs> Have you figured out the uh, screen share yet? Because that's kind of pivotal to all this. Well, I mean, I can't share something that uh, I don't know how you would share it with me so I can share it. But um, unless it's in my email. Did you email me everything? Your presentation thing? Yeah, I emailed you all but one link that I just came okay. up with like 30 minutes ago. Okay. Well, you talk. I'll get that fired up, and then um, we'll get going. Uh... So, citizen science. How can we do that as hobbyists? Well, uh, with springtails especially, uh, I'm collecting species that have never been cultured before. So that's one huge thing is when you can, when you get them in culture, you can uh, observe their behaviors and learn a lot more about them. And you have more opportunity to uh, do detailed analysis of them, such as genome sequencing, which is something that uh, a professor in Tennessee is interested in doing with these new orange springtails that a uh, friend of mine introduced to the hobby that he collected in Florida. Um, oh, look at that. Figuring out the screen sharing. Do we have it? Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. Let's see. Can you hear me still? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Hopefully they can <clears throat> hear me. Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> that's, worth, that's worth having you here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. This should be it. Okay, wait. Yeah, my my screen sharing and the links is kind of pivotal to this whole presentation. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. And I'm a little bit off my game with the whole 15 minute of chaos. I hear you. I'm a little bit off from that too. <laughs> why is it not sharing the right screen? I don't know why. Um, okay, we'll get it. We'll get it. Just talk about it. We're good. What have you done? What have you what? done today for citizen science, dude? <clears throat> well, I would absolutely. I lost you. Well, let's try to share. Oh, there he is. He's back. All right. <laughs> Stop touching stuff. Sorry, sorry. Can you hear <laughs> Could you hear me at least when I disappeared? Kind of. 
Let's see if we can put this into the matrix. All right, awesome. Is that me? Or is that uh, you? That's, that's all of us. No, that's me doing it. Hmm. I'm going to stop sharing that. I don't know why it's not <laughs> putting it in here. All right, let's see. This is a shit show, man. It is. It is a shit show. <laughs> Yeah, Aftech, we've we've done it before. Like I know why it's it, it's acting really weird. Even hitting the links, it was asking me for weird pings. So I click window, and it's not there. Okay. What are the windows? And I'm not used to doing this on Microsoft Edge. Let's. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, is that gonna work? Oh, very nice. Is that your screen that is showing a link that I yeah. shared? Yeah, this is the first link that you shared. So I can't really see it from here, but this is um, the checklist of Colum Columbololio. Columbola. Yeah, yep, that's, that's what that's, I said, dude. <laughs> that, that's uh, that's columbola.org, which is an incredible resource. It's like the resource for anybody interested in springtails and going deeper into that. There's keys, uh, contact information for different researchers all over the world, which is actually how I got in touch with the doctor in Tennessee, okay. as well as the one in Poland, which I don't know if I've talked about here before. I don't think so. I haven't heard about a, a Polish doctor. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the guy in Poland is like the world expert on the type of springtails that the oranges are, uh, Neonurinae. Yeah. Neonuridae with a D, not an N. Um, hey, Miles is here. All right. Sorry. Yeah, so I sent some samples preserved in ethanol to him. And I don't know if they made it because they got stuck in Polish customs for a while. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, he was going to analyze them and describe them, the uh, the reds and the two, the, the oranges from Spain and these newer oranges from Florida. So yeah, like this is a, just a great re resource for that, and uh, Springtails especially having this resource is great for hobbyists slash citizen scientists like us because these species that we have in culture, we can uh, we can uh, actually ask the the real experts if there's any uh, anything that they want to learn from that, like the one in Tennessee I sent. The springtails along with some of my springtail food and he's like wow this is this is like magic powder and they're breeding like crazy and uh he's a professor so he's got a lot going on but he really wants to do a dna analysis and a redescription of the species oh um, that's cool to have somebody that has access to that technology is really cool yeah uh <clears throat> do you go to the search site button on the far right there on the far right let's see search site it's like uh this site is horrible to navigate but it is yeah <laughs> that's what i hate about all these sites is the sites suck it's like yeah linux or something uh i don't on the far right you said yeah search site i got it i got it. sorry about my glasses man all right so what are we looking for uh click it yeah did it Search did for it, did anything happen? Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't see the. Uh, uh, search for the word Neonura. N e a n u r a. N e a n u r a. Yes. All right. Let's see. What we got not found. <laughs> N e a n. You are a. You can make me put my glasses back on for this show. So we're the nerd, aren't you? No, nah, saying saying, neo neuro not found. God damn it! <laughs> All right, uh, try. You're just a basket of crap today. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm yeah, kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, th this is. Uh, this I'm teasing, is little brother. I'm teasing. This is one hell of a presentation. It is. It's pretty good. It's got a little slideshow over here on the right with all the little buggies. Yeah, oh, there's that's some cool. globulars. There's a little globular here. Yeah, I'm going to disappear for a second. Yeah, sure. Can I show these guys? Is this what to show? Oh, hey, cool. There's like 60 species that's going through here, guys. This is really cool. 
that one's pretty uh <clears throat> yeah so these guys are all pretty dope i want to ask him about uh he's trying to hit some links or something or he's checking the spelling I want to ask him about that wicked camera he's got. He's got some crazy microscopic camera that takes these amazing pictures of springtails. Um, taxonomy and information security are two crafts. Don't learn how to work. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. What'd you find for me? Uh, I didn't really find shit for you. <laughs> with awesome. That, with, the, with the search not working. But why don't you go to a different link? Uh, the, okay. The yeah, let's I do that. The iNaturalist link. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. And I know this is like the hub for citizen science. I'm going to disappear one more second. Okay. You don't have to disappear. I don't know why he keeps popping out. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> uh, that's already gone. So let's see. <clears throat> let's see how I did this last time. Nope, that wasn't it. Okay. Let's close that checklist. Okay. Trying to figure this out. All right. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. I know. I know. I swear it's not like we're figuring it out. I swear to you. StreamYard is being super weird. And to be fair, I've never run it on this before so on uh, microsoft edge <clears throat> hey at least we're killing time we're almost i'm there. pretty sure that's the problem <laughs> yeah right we are definitely killing time so keep talking talk about springtails or clay or something save the show ryan god damn it i'm not a good host no you're not but we're gonna that stuff. <laughs> that's all right i'm here i've got you I've got you, little brother. I thought I had it all figured out, and then my brain yeah, just me scrambled too. by those technical difficulties. And now I don't remember anything I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Are you serious? I really should have wrote some shit down, but it was all in my noggin. That's how I roll. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Boom. This is just beautiful right here. There we go. Yeah, that's the exact one I wanted you to pull up. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, so iNaturalist is awesome because you can uh, document any living creature. Uh, this is the this is the springtails of the world, but uh, yeah, literally any living creature. And uh, as you can see, there's over sixty thousand springtail observations uh, from all over the world, and you can go on there and there's leaderboards. <laughs> So if you go to, sorry, I have to like put the phone up to my face to be able to read any of this. Go to identifiers and there's like, there's a leaderboard there. Well, there's leaderboards for everything. So it's it's also kind of competitive, which is like a big reason why, why I identify is because it's kind of fun to try to climb the leaderboards. <laughs> for identifying species. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Most observations most species and this is specifically springtails okay <clears throat> so where are you man i don't see you on here oh go go to hell, uh, bro. identifiers up above the up above the pictures there here we go i think i'm number three right now which is look at this guy yeah <laughs> see i would just be tagging like you find 50 of the same species in one spot take individual pictures and be like look at this Look at this. I found Springtail George here, this Springtail Bill, this Springtail Eddie, Springtail Sheila. Um, I would cheat. I would 100% cheat. All right, let's go back and see. I want to take a look at the species they found here. Look at these guys. Seashore Springtail. She sells seashells down by the Springtails. It's pretty cool the way that it's structured, huh? Yeah, I think it's great. And I like um, like these here. This uh, It's pretty much an... I'm a big fan of the um, the drawings. Like the... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a drawing. No, that's Maybe not. Looks like a drawing. That's wild. It does. It looks just like pencil lines. Yeah, it's a, 
perfect picture. So I was asking while you were logged out, is this something that um, your camera has helped out with, your new camera system? New camera system? <laughs> yeah, you're taking pictures like this all the time, like this close. Um, your camera before this sucked, and now it's like the last oh. few months. Oh, I just got a, I got a new phone. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's just a phone? You get that close with your phone camera? Uh, I use this clip-on lens, this $22 clip-on lens with my phone. But, yeah, I got a... Unbelievable. I got a, I got a new phone, so that's helped a lot. It's like three generations newer than my old one. So, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's a crazy. $20 job from Amazon, right? It's just mm -hmm. the one everybody's been getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little... It has a lanyard. Does it have a lanyard, or did I add that to my... No, I think you did that yourself. <laughs> Okay, I had to because I was out and I was worried I was going to drop it and scratch it up um, trying to take some macro pics outside. But my camera sucks. My phone sucks. So um, I get what I can, but it's not great. Hey, and Chris, thanks for coming. I also, oh, Rick got is a, here too. I also recently got a uh, a really good microscope as well. So I've been doing some... I've been practicing a little. I haven't really found time. It's It's actually a lot of fun once you get past the horrific frustration of trying to align a one millimeter bug under a microscope. Maybe one millimeter. <laughs> one yeah. millimeter is like a big spring tail. So <laughs> I have, uh, I've been told I don't know what a millimeter is by the ant collectors because I try to identify stuff by millimeters. And I'm like, I don't know. It's like two millimeters. And oh, that species doesn't do this. Okay. All right, man, calm down. I told you, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I can post the link to mine. I'm pretty sure Ryan has the same one I do. So I got it. I got the one I got because uh, Biggs got his. So that was the same one that he got that he was taking great pictures from. And it seems like when you showed yours, it's the same one as mine. Um, yeah, the, the Apex. So 12 by 24. Yeah, Max mine came with a couple extra lenses. You can kind of screw on, but they all suck. So... <laughs> Yeah, mine's just the macro. I, I have one as well that came with like the fish eye and the telescope, and they they do suck. <laughs> yeah, they're not really. Yeah, they don't really do a job like that. So, um, so anybody can catalog and put things on here then. Yeah, and then, yeah. Do it's they have moderators? Yeah. Is there moderation where they can just be like, "No, you're stupid. Goodbye." Uh. What the hell? There is moderators, but it doesn't really work like that. Like each yeah. anybody can anybody can do as far as I know, I'm not an expert on my naturalist, but anybody can do identification. So uh for springtails I see a lot of like that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, space. you gotta get these. This is like a thirty dollar springtail springtail right here. Yeah. Look at this thing. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. And they're giant too, the the largest springtails in the world. These are? I think the the yellow ones are. I mean, oh, he fell over. Oh, he's they're, even cuter falling over. They're like the size of a thumbnail. A thumbnail? What? Yeah, they're big. Maybe not that big. I don't know. I've I got big thumbnails, man. <laughs> um, So who's the guy? Does it say down here who submitted this? It just says the species. Okay. I think that those are like Tasmanian or New Zealand or something like that. Oh, so we'll never see them. Okay. No, never, ever. They'll never for come to America. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I got all excited for nothing. Those are cooler than most isopods. Um, so anyone, like I could take pictures and post them up here. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, other people will, with their own interests, like I'm interested in springtails, so I only ever identify springtails. They'll come through sure. and... They'll either confirm or deny. So, like, it's it's kind of passive aggressive okay. because, like, if you deny someone's identification, it's like, Ryan Boy disagrees with your ID. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and then if that's there's rough. Like, and then if there's enough like disagreements, then it changes the like labeled ID or whatever. That is rough. That would be these guys. <laughs> they look like they look like koosh balls. Do you guys know what koosh balls are? Is that still a thing? No, I'm dating there's myself. A, there's some stuff like though there's some stuff like those in Southeast Asia. I know someone in Malaysia who had four distinct species that were like those big red bumpy ones. I don't 
I don't think he got him to breathe, but those will definitely make it to the U.S. someday because those Southeast Asian guys are pretty big yeah. about collecting stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like you could smuggle these in in your hair, and uh, you'd be fine. <laughs> They'd be like, dude, you have weird lice. Beat it. Stay oh my in God. America. So true. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, like Rastafari. Yeah, that's the one. The Rastafarian. But... <laughs> He's got like a little smiley face right on his back of his head. I think that those are in the U.S. Get the F out of here. Yeah, or some, something like that is in the U.S. Oreo fasciitis. I had that like three weeks ago. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But see, then you've got, they've got so much diversity that it's crazy. Now, have they recorded like a carnivorous, like a predatory springtail? Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know if it's on iNaturalist, naturalist and it's kind of obscure, but uh, I'm talking to one springtail researcher who really got me interested in carnivorous springtails. Uh, I guess that they've like examined the gut content of uh, like certain cave species because there's springtails that evolved to live out and they find like the body parts of mites and other springtails. So it's a springtail eats mites. You don't really hear about that. Well, I wonder if they're eating it. I, I, can they tell if they're eating it as like carrion or like, like finding it? Uh, it's like just they're like just eating, like they're only finding body parts in there, so that would okay. signify being carnivorous. But all springtails will like scavenge or like eat their eat their dead. Yeah, right, right. I get the detrivore thing. Um, so how are you in touch with these guys? Like, who's this guy you're in touch with that you were saying with the predatory? springtail hypothesis uh, thing well he he's in the uh springtails facebook group is how i okay started talking to him so you um, can even utilize facebook for good okay yeah stay away from the political shit <laughs> well i'd like to apologize to anyone who's my friend on facebook <laughs> um, so you feel free to mute me uh i'm a jerk it's either pictures of my kids or political rantings and ravings and uh yeah, yeah. I've lost a lot of friends over the year. And it's only 2020. Uh, it's only January. Man, this could be the whole show. There's enough cool shit to look at here. Dude, I, yeah, you can go if you want. <laughs> I'm just, just going to go through these. I'm not even going to talk about the science. Just, ooh. Okay, so these are obviously Tasmanian because of the Latin name. Tasmania. I mean, come on. This looks like the scrunchie I have for my, like, to wash my, my, the thing I wash myself with in the shower. Like, that's what this looks like. The weird plastic sponge thing. I didn't uh, know why, it was alive. Why don't we go to the, uh, the bug guide link that I sent you? Okay. Well, because I'm having a lot of fun with this, dude. Well, I know like, you are, but. All right. I, bug, I, who? I, the bug I, guide? I, bug guide. Okay. Uh, bug guide is actually where I got my start and really got okay. springtails. So, so I can add, I can chat it up about that a little bit. I'm getting good at this. All right, here we go. Look at that. That's like a pro. Oh, I've been here. Um, yeah, this is like the it's like the North American springtail family tree, and okay. you can po you can post any bug there for ID, but. Um, for springtails, one of the leading experts in the world, based out of Belgium, he does the springtail IDs here. So that's how I got interested. I, I posted some wild ones that I had found in my terrarium to bug yeah. guy. He does. He just really inflamed my interest. Uh, started culturing them for fun, and then did a trade with Eddie. You know. Eddie. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna have Eddie on and like. Two or three weeks. I don't remember. Oh, how I don't ever look ahead, but Eddie's coming on. Um, we became like besties immediately. So, yeah, he's the best. He's actually the best. Um, we've got a whole section for frass. Okay, let me go back to spring tools. Yeah, good guys. I like doing since I got into ice pods, I've met so many people that are, you know, science based. Um, let's go back here. So, we've got, yeah, this, Eddie's the gonna make some beetle poop. <clears throat> He's going to make some beetle poop? No, he's going to send me some beetle poop. We're doing a trade. I'm sending him clay. All right. I got the box stuff, and he sent him beetle poop. That seems fair. That seems like a fair trade right there. Yeah, mud for poop. Yeah, I mean, 
They could both be mud, technically. One is, are you going to make stuff out of the poop? What's the point of the poop? I was hoping that you would ask. I yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't want to leave it off at just saying, yeah, he's going to send me some beetle, beetle shit. I mean, I would have just followed up myself. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to tell you how to run a show. Like, that's an so intro. Uh, and then you just talk about why you're not a maniac and you're not, like, going to make tea out of it or something. <laughs> like, this is what so, I'm going to do with the beetle poop. Well, oh, some of it. I'm having, I'm having uh, Kevin Nasser send me some millipede poop, too. So, oh, Kevin Nasser, oh, millipede poop. Okay, so the friends, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was reading a paper, and some species of springtail are known to only feed on arthropod feces. So, okay. I'm just gonna start collecting arthropod feces and just experiment. You can definitely do that with your isopods. Um, so one tip that I have for your isopods is get a leaf. Get like a large-ish leaf like this, um, a whole leaf dried, and put their springtail food or your, whatever your isopod food or springtail food, your treats, in that leaf. Mm. They'll come up there, and, and you won't have dirt in there. They'll climb in there to eat, and they'll poop as they go. So then when the food is gone, you'll just have this That's frass true. in there. That's yeah. True. I'm going to do that. I'm a pretty smart freaking guy. So um, I act stupid a lot, but yeah. Yeah. There you go. Pro tip. Um. <laughs> Click on one of those images. Nope. This, this will see. get us back to the guy. <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, let's this is any one of them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I think that's a spider. Yeah. I don't even think that's a spring tail. <laughs> yeah, go back. <laughs> that's a spider. Son Click on a, a picture of a spring tail. There you go. And then there should be a button up above it that says browse. Uh, let's see. Browse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go, and now we're back to the whole like uh, family tree of it. So this is the family tree of this species. Oh, you gotta look. This is Toma Tomacaridae, Tomaceridae. Yeah, those are the largest springtails in North America, actually. So up above there should be a button that says Columbola. I'm not sure. It nope. Should, it should be blue. Oh wait, maybe. Hexapods, Tomacaridae. The columbus should be <laughs> i'm like straining my eyes to see this well yeah you gotta get a computer man to shell out some of those clay bucks um nope nothing says columbola does it say springtails at all uh nope maybe in the I taxonomy know. i know it does i swear it doesn't i swear you're missing it yeah, springtails and allies columbola yeah, there you go. click on that okay well that wasn't blue man it was like green or some shit Oh, all right come on, bro. oh look it's a rubber ducky dude yeah, that's, that's the rastafarian one yeah rubber ducky isopods <laughs> or springtails i called it it's mine sorry yeah Nailed so it. this is like this is like the basis of the family tree okay and i thought that this would be really cool to share here since we're doing like screen there's a lot of really cool electron light across this? the two those are anal spines i think that looks that looks like a different episode altogether Sorry, guys, we're going to go through this a little bit. We're going to go through some electron microscope shots because uh, these are fascinating. All right, you can keep talking. I'm just going to keep looking at these for a minute. <coughs> oh, I'm just, I'm having fun, too. Look at the structures of the, the cuticle, the structures of the skin. This is crazy. That's what makes springtails so hydrophobic, and they actually, uh, they can survive underwater for days even because that hydrophobic, bubbly-looking cuticle traps air bubbles. I've never seen mine get underwater. Like, they all just walk on it. Yeah, they, they do float. But if there's some strange event that forces them underwater, like let's say you pour That's water. Them, then, yeah, they can they can survive under there for a okay, few Okay, let's see. Oh, do I have to do all this? Let's go back to the Columbola. Okay. These are their allies. Yeah, so uh, click <clears throat> on the blue Padiromorpha button, I guess. This is the four orders, and we're going to go down the rabbit hole of one of the orders. Okay, all right. And then it takes us one step further. So we're now we're at, what the hell's after order? Family? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Super family, family. Uh, click whatever one, blue button, piques your interest. Let's just keep going down. Let's go to Neom Nura, whatever we were trying to find. Here we go. Purples, purples and pinks. Oh, hell yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, those are the... Those are the fabled purple springtails that 
fabled. <laughs> I, well, I and many others are desperately hoping that someone will find them and introduce them to the hobby because they they gather in those massive swarms. So I mean, it's any day now someone will someone will find them. But where? Like somebody found them to get pictures. Like where the hell? It's mostly like after rain they'll form big like big puddles. Like yeah. My, there's a observation on iNaturalist in San Francisco near one of my friend's houses. And he spent like a year and a half so far going out after the rain and looking in puddles and he hasn't been able to find them. Dude. <laughs> I feel like right now, the way Springtails are going, there would be a license to print money. This and the rubber ducky ones, I'm going to trademark those. And um, so every time anybody sells one, they got a kickback. That'll be dope. <laughs> We gotta make them dollars. Uh, do you want to go back to the Neon Neon Uriday? Yep. I didn't realize how far back I was going. All right. And then uh, <laughs> Neon Neon Ine, I think Neon Neon I got Ide. Yeah, Ide. There we go. Click on that. And then Ine, she should be. And then Neon Nira, maybe I'm not sure. I got Neon Nurini. Nope. Uh, that's what. Yep, that's all I got, man. I got Moral Moral Ludney. Hmm. Uh, Sense of Liminary Narini. Oh uh, yeah. Dude, uh, here we go, Narini. Knee and your knee. I think that might actually be it. And Never mind. This goes to Neonura. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Neonura. Click on that. These are super. Oh, there we go. There's something cool. Yeah, there's 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 the the U.S. native orange screen tail that I was I was hoping to find it on columbola.org because there's some interesting gifs that he posted that I recorded of some interesting spring tail anatomy. They have these. Uh, they're called vesicles of the colophore. They're like <laughs> strange name. Uh, they're these tubes that come out of the bellies of all springtails and they have so many functions like in the gif that i recorded it had stuck it to the glass of the terrarium and it was using all six of its legs to clean its mouth but the legs were like wrote it was so it's so cool but that the colophore also is used for like urination like they'll stick it down into the dirt and excrete okay. fluids and it's also used fluids yeah, it's also used for drinking. Like they'll stick it into some moist substrate to extract fluids. Pretty cool. It's also and when they jump, because you know springtails. Colon boy. Springtails like fling away at a at a massive pace. Yeah, and, they do. And when they, land, when they land, the uh, the colophor comes out. I really want to Columbo? hear you. Columbo? Columbola? Columbola? No A sound. No A. Should sound just like the name in French. Columbo. There you go. <laughs> That's awful. That's awful. Columbo. <laughs> That's how I hear French people. Oh, no, 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 no. That? Yeah, but those. Uh, those they, they fling those... themselves. Yeah, they fling yeah, themselves. Yeah, when, when they fling those freaky tubes, they come out and they. Stick to the ground to keep it from bouncing because they fling at such a incredible rate that otherwise they just keep on flying. That's too funny. Yeah, because they're so tiny and the force that they use to jump is like. Beyond. Yeah, uh, I used to have a really large species and it flinged off my finger. It felt like a cricket, and it's just a spring tail, like three millimeters. Yeah, they're strong. That's wild. Well, I did a Parisian accent there. See, I need to go travel the world and do this show. So join the Patreon. The link will be down below. You can join for a dollar now. Um, so, yeah, you can just do that. You can that. all afford a dollar a month. If I got – there's 315 of you now. If I got $315 a month, we could put that into a lot of stuff. We could do a lot more with this show at least every two months. What's that? You could do expeditions. Well, I want to go tour around and meet some other YouTubers or like you're talking like scientists, you know, and go out and do like outings, you know, go look for yeah. stuff, go herping with Don Gallagher, go uh, visit people's collections. You know what I mean? Like meet them where they're at, bro. That's what, that's what community is about. Um, 
go visit Aftec and speak French. Well, just use a shitty French accent. So <laughs> it's the first time I did an accent by request. <clears throat> the whole rest uh, has been like not requested at all. I want, could you, is it possible to open one of the links that I put into the chat? Uh, put it in there again. All right. That's going to require me disappearing. So yeah, I might be able to do, let me scroll up. Let me scroll up and see where are you at here? So you did it a long time ago. That's the problem. Okay. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Oh, he disappeared already. Ha 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 ha. Links un incoming. And then he didn't post any Here links. I posted the links. It looks like they uh, didn't show up or something. Maybe it's a thing that they don't allow you to. It's weird. Maybe you have to be an admin. No, you don't, because those porno people come in here all the time. Yeah, don't click on the porno links, you guys. Well, I mean, do what you want. I don't care. <clears throat> don't get catfished on my show, though. I don't want to feel that, responsible. Did that link that I just pasted show up? Nah. Uh, send, it, send it to me in Messenger, and I'll, I'll hit it. Try to close all my weird links, and we'll uh, we'll see what happens. This should this should uh, show us that GIF that I was talking about, and this is also that uh, U.S. native orange string tail that really kicked off my interest in the uh, citizen science aspect of it. It made me realize just how real it is, like how much potential there is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's if you unlock it a little bit, even it's so great. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? We are at checklists no <coughs> which one was it that the just that's it one. checklist okay all right so where's this gif it's hurting my soul to say gif oh i think you gotta scroll down yeah there they are Is it yeah that's, one? That's, that's me and you're a grow away uh that's probably going to be renamed after the whole dna analysis and stuff Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's when it's cleaning its mouth. And you see that clear little thing? That's the colophore suctioned against the glass. And in the other GIF, it shows the colophore coming out to grip the glass. But it's can actually, you guys see that or not? I don't know that I can make that bigger. It's actually <gasps> two, two tubes, but uh, they're inflatable, so they can be short like that to grip the glass. Oh, well, that's why. Whoa. Yeah, I filmed that in my uh, aquarium. I can't do any of that with my tubes. That's what. So you filmed this, okay? Yeah, with my twenty-two dollar macro lens. See, guys, you too could be taking great pictures. So many of these guys. This, Seeing this, them on their back is so funny. This link is also going to be a great one to see some really cool string cells if you want to scroll through it. I mean, there's a million on here. <laughs> got labeled here. Oh, uh, <clears throat> scroll back up to that orange one. And this is another cool thing about this website. Uh, click on the species name. It should say Grow A in blue. To the. I'm not sure how. Oh, that's cool. That's kind of shows where it's from. Here we go. Yeah, it's the range map. So there's range maps of every single springtail species. This is all the U.S. Okay. That's like basically the U.S. Yeah. A U.S. native. I don't think it is. It is, it is the I U.S. I don't think it's showing up here on the. It's in the middle. Like. Is it not showing up? And it should be in the center of the page now. No. No, I'm not. <clears> seeing <throat> okay. I don't know. Let me try to do it again. I have too many windows open now. Um, okay. This cough sucks. I'm not gonna lie to you. World distribution map. Okay. How's the exorcist puking going? How's what? How's the exorcist puking going? That's <laughs> over with. Yeah, it wasn't even all the puking. It was um, it was a lot. It was a lot going on. I wasn't happy. Okay, it didn't go through there. Let's try this again. Okay, there's that. 
Oh, share this tab instead. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, that's the range map, and there's a uh, there's some species that are literally the entire thing, including Antarctica. So that's yeah. That's wild. So that's some a, of these species a, are just everywhere. That's another awesome feature of this this resource. Um, do you want to go back to the main page? We can get back on track with the whole citizen science topic. <laughs> Which one was the main page? The main page of columbola.org. Let's see. You could probably access yeah, it from here. here. Just like go to the home or whatever. Look at that. Man, am I figuring this out? Yeah. <laughs> good job. <laughs> uh, it should say something like contacts in the far right or even keys, whichever one you want to go through first. I think we should take a look at both of them. Uh, after I'm going to put the links, all these links in the um, description of the video afterwards. So you got to sit with me and watch them on my trap, my time. Um, what drives you nuts? The owners, moderators can post links. Only owners, moderators. No, nah, man, the porno people post their links all the time, so it's weird. Yeah, my uh, link doesn't work. <laughs> you got to get into porno, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. This is the checklist. What am I looking for here? <laughs> uh, it should say, like, keys or contacts, whichever one you want to take a look at first on the far right, or maybe the top. I'm not sure what it looks like on desktop. Keys? All right, let's see. Yeah, so this is a Holy great. <laughs> it looks intimidating, but this is a great uh, resource for uh, any citizen scientists with a microscope that are interested in identifying their springtails. Let's see what one of these does. I'm just going to click a random one because I don't know what any of that means. Some of it will take you to like uh, scientific literature websites, and some of them will be will keep you on the. Man, this is fucking French. <laughs> we can't we can't we can't see it but <laughs> you can't see it what no it's all right so, here we go yeah here you go it opened a new window sorry but yeah i have this little thing that just is like share this that's a compilation of like every single springtail key that's online and sometimes they're not online so you'll have to go to the contact info section that i was talking about this work is based on the okay, this is cool and ask them if they have a key this is a side thing guys i want to talk about that's cool so uh this was in french i had it translated for me and this is what's cool about science is it translates perfectly like it, it isn't weird grammar or anything like that this totally translated perfect which is great uh let's see all right so we're going back here what are we looking for uh, back to contact. contact. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, you can put your info in here. That's not <clears> it. <throat> I'm sorry. Maybe it's experts. Expertise. Hmm. Looking for expertise. For me. This is like this might a be list it. of ten thousand people. Like. Yeah, yeah. That, that there we is, go. That, that's how I found the guy in Tennessee as well as the guy in Poland. Because um, you can, it says like what university they're affiliated with, what oh, that's cool. what types of springtails they're interested in. So, see, uh, this guy's amateur. Yeah. This guy's an amateur entomologist. Okay, that's that's probably you. That's Josh Kristen. That, that that's a lot of us. Actually, I would say a, a lot of us are amateur entomologists or uh, crustaceanologists. <laughs> I think they call them isopodologists. Isopodologists. And a springtail scientist is a columbologist. That's bogus. I don't, I'm not buying that at all. Um, <clears throat> All right, what else are we looking at? We're looking at this old man who looks really surprised right now. <laughs> um, um, I'm not... Look at this guy. He's so happy to be in a... Look at him. He's like, Colimbula! Colimbula! <laughs> There's nothing too interesting on this page, but it's just another great resource. No, I think this is part of the... As far as our topic, this is about as interesting as it gets. Research interests, interests. And yeah, you guys can look. Look at this. This is like 
citizen scientists to get in touch with the real scientists and uh, and actually make yourself useful to science. Because you're not really a citizen scientist unless you're doing something for science. There you go. Yeah, produce. It's all about the numbers. No, it's not about the numbers. Produce, you guys. <clears throat> Please put the links. Hey, man. I'm going to disrespect the French every chance I get, Aftek. I'm sorry. That's the, <laughs> that's the one kind of white person that's not part of me. It's the one, like, my family did the DNA test or whatever, and we found out that we're, like, 30 different things that we didn't realize we were, and it's all, like, the lightest skinned people you've ever met. So you're <clears throat> basically towards French people. Um, I don't know if it's racist. Uh... I don't know if that qualifies. I don't know how that works because they're still white, right? So I don't know. Whatever. I dislike that area. <laughs> that's the that's, that's borderline. <laughs> or I love their their food. I love their food, um, and they are responsible for a lot of culture that I respect. Um, but I, I, I think fun shit to fidget with here on the side. Yeah, your booger sucker. Uh, yeah, it's one of my many boogers, many different types of booger suckers in my arsenal. See, guys, and that's the tools. That's the tools you need to be out there in the this field. I, I just use this <clears> thing <throat> to like blow on them. Sometimes that comes in handy. Xenophobic. <laughs> it is xenophobic. I'll accept that. That's fine. Um, it's a coming to stereotypes, too. Um, knowing you are different and it's not your thing is not racist. I don't know, man. I don't want to have the racism discussion tonight. <laughs> I, I'm not saying anyone's wrong, but this is taking a weird turn. All because of the damn French. You see why I don't like them? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm just I'm just picking on them. Yeah, I don't I don't care one way or another about the French. Um, I'm just Those being a jerk. Canadians, though. Yeah, I'm just being a jerk and hoping they're not here. Like, if I'm going to talk trash about a particular type of people, it's going to be like the Amish. Cause they're not watching this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they're never going to see it and come after me or like Eskimos. I don't even know if they're still Eskimos, but yeah, they're never going to see it. It's not cause I don't like Eskimos or respect that they survive on whale blubber, but they're never going to see it. So what's, what's the harm? Um, that was, that got real weird real fast. So yeah, you need some gear too, to get out there. So with springtails, what's, I have a really hard time even looking at them with a macro thing unless they're on a food source because they're so fast and they, they skitter around. And if they get any kind of, you know, they're tiny, they're food sources. So if they get any kind of agitated, whoop, they're gone. Like any stimulus whatsoever, they're like, oh, no, I'll see ya. Um, so do you have a tip for like keeping them a little still or finding a spot, like especially in the wild where you're like trying to ID them and get a good look? Do you have a tiny little thing you put them in? In the wild, it's a bitch. I mean, yeah, yeah, because hurting uh, them into whatever you want to herd them into is yeah, getting pictures, uh, getting pictures on site is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll want to use like an aspirator uh, to collect yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's a few methods you can uh, you can beat the shit out of them. Okay. So put them in the aspirator. Just shake them, <laughs> rough them up a little bit. They'll typically, they'll typically break a couple legs, and they won't really be able to move. I don't really like that method. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, don't do that, guys. Don't do <laughs> Something that. Something that I found that works is I'll spray a bunch of water on my table, and then I'll blow them into it, and they get stuck okay. for at least a few seconds. Okay. Uh, All right, that makes sense. And if you're not necessarily trying to take pictures of them, but you're trying to observe them. I can't recommend this puppy enough. I think it's yeah. called like a craft lens. I've got this thing a few years ago. I paint miniatures, got... so I have one of those in storage. Yeah. I don't use yeah, them anymore. Yeah, it's got a ring light and a really good magnifying glass. I use this thing literally every day. You so. can get nerd gogs too. They have these like this thing with a flip down lens, and you have like it, the thing I have. It's so it's a set of big sunglasses with a. De detachable lens that flips up and down. Yeah. And there's, uh, I have 10 lenses, I think, with different magnifications. I think Jose is one of them. I saw a picture of his daughter wearing it or something. Yeah. So, um, to ch I think they were checking springtails or uh, ice pods or something. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm yeah, so those work really good. One of these. <clears throat> yeah. I like the the goggles because they have a um, if something moves on me, um, I, I don't usually use them for hobby stuff or for animal stuff, but for my hobby stuff, if something moves, I move my whole head. But if you are wearing the goggles, my advice is to keep your eyes straight forward and don't try to look peripherally because you'll throw up. So cause all of a sudden, everything is regular size, and then you get all kinds of vertigo. Well, I do. I don't know. Um, now I have to Google Eskimo. It's probably an awful thing that I just said. It's probably like calling Native Americans Indian, which I think is still, the fact that we still do that is ridiculous to me. They're not Indian. But we just called them Indian 400 years ago, and we just, yeah, we still do it. Whatever. Um, anyway, we're back. We're back on the topic. An affiliate link for that. Like, <laughs> back on the topic of race. <laughs> Aftec wants 47, 47 links. Um, I need to get affiliate links. I'll tell you, that's another way to get uh, get some good money. <clears throat> Fund this show. Um, what else was I going to touch on? So, okay, we're in for... I feel like we owe these people a little more show since it took us so long to get it going. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've been uh, not so good on the topic, and I really do apologize for that. I really should have wrote down stuff because it was all in my head. I was all so excited, and then 15 minutes of chaos just wrecked me. It was more like a half an hour because we were both trying to get in. Like None of my stuff was working either, which is weird because I was fine a couple weeks ago with Wally. It was it was fine. Um, I don't know if there's something going on. It, it seems weird. Maybe the satellites finally blew up. So I don't trust technology either. <clears throat> That's how you know I'm old. Um, I'm definitely learning a lot, at, at least on um, where to find springtails online. Now, the iNaturalist and stuff, I get uh, intimidated because I don't know a lot of Latin names. So when you come up to that blue list that's just Latin names, uh, I'm like, uh, uh I'm going to go look at YouTube videos. Work. Yeah, it's like I'm going to go watch Russ for a little while on YouTube, or I'm going to watch Wally, and and uh, I, I'm too, too stupid for this. I don't know Latin. I don't kind of want to know Latin. Yeah, there's really no such thing as common names when it comes to springtails. We kind of just, us hobbyists, kind of just invent them. We're going to cover that next week. Oh, really? With who? I'm having Justin on. Uh, Green Jedi Monkey is going to come on. And you will oh, nice. see a striking resemblance to the two of us. I think I found my double. So um, one of my doubles. He was born like 20 years late or some 10 years late. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're very similar. I had no idea. Um, yeah, we're going to get into a discussion about common names and common names are common names. They're whatever somebody came up with. So, um, common names kind of suck sometimes though. Like, especially they do. Odds. yeah, we're going to get into that. We're going to, I have a couple specifically, we're going to get into common names and the ones that are sucky and my suggestions for replacements, which I've got a few, um, <laughs> I, I didn't know how many new ice pods were out there. So that's something else that could be citizen science because that's something sorely lacking. I'm almost thinking of not no longer really doing common names for a lot of my spring tells because they're all so goddamn similar that it just. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I don't ref, I don't like referring to them as their common names anyways. It's just unless they don't have a species level ID because then you'll just have five things with a genus level ID and there's no way to differentiate them without a common name. But. Right. And I, I feel like there's a lot of responsibility to use the, the Latin names, but I also feel like um, isopods in particular, that's, that's been the one that I've been into the longest, but if it wasn't for rubber duckies or dairy cows, like if we were calling them, um, whatever the are, are rubber duckies even still cubaris or are they something else? They, I don't know. They're still called. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. I don't think so, they have a species level name yet. Yeah, they're like B, whatever, Cubar is, uh, yeah. Rubber Ducky. So that's their descriptor. So, But if it wasn't for those common names, then we wouldn't have the people involved in the hobby that we do now, like the level of people, if it wasn't for those weird common names. So it is a matter of like marketing to get people into it. And then they get into, well, some of them, enough of them get into the science aspect of it. Um, but I feel like in springtails, like you're saying, they're so tiny and they're so similar. There are probably three species that look 
and like it, the same it also, one. <clears throat> it also almost feels like clickbait when you like give them this crazy cool name and then people buy it and they're like, I didn't realize it was like one millimeter. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you what, those ones, those ones that look like sea cucumbers, holy shit, would I pay for those? I don't like to pay for anything. I would pay for those, my friend. Um, those are cool. Those are cool. That, uh, and if they're big, like you can observe them with the naked eye well. I hear that. I don't remember where I heard it, but there's something really weird about their diet, and they've got like a special like gut microbiome going on. So of course they do. Of them. course, so I'll yeah, never I'm have even, them. They're like they only live in old growth forests. Like I'm not sure it's even possible to keep them in captivity. Like but there is, Okay. There is a uh, there is a giant species in Europe right now that should be making its way to the U.S. sometime soon. Yeah, but they're not cool like that, man. Come on, come on. Maybe we can get that guy that. Uh, bred the neon fish to, to put some jellyfish DNA in there and we could get some really cool ones. <laughs> and he can trademark them and it would be well, awesome. Someone, we'll all sell them the, illegally. Someone was messing around with jellyfish DNA? What's yeah, the so this guy, uh, go to PetSmart. Go to PetSmart this week and you'll find out what I'm talking about. So they have glowfish now. So they have... I, um, I know what those are, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple tetras. There's a Danio. There's, I think there's Cory Cats and now there's Beta, Beta Splendens. That all look like they're about to die. I've never seen a glowfish beta that looked healthy. Um, and it promotes keeping your fish under a black light, which I don't think is healthy for them either. Um, or a UV light. But um, he genetically modified them, like on a DNA level. And he added, from what I understand, I, I may be wrong on this, but they came out when I was big into fish. So he added uh, jellyfish DNA to them. Jellyfish or anemone? I want to say, I'm pretty sure it's jellyfish to give them that. It's not bioluminescence, but it's that neon color. Um, so you would, I didn't realize that genetic modification was like that advanced yet. He did it on like a CRISPR level. Yeah. It, and this is like 15 years ago. I might be wrong. 15 or 20 years ago. Oh, look at that. You could be a 20 year younger me. That's what F-Tech thinks. I do call him little brother. So that's possible. Ryan, I call him little brother. Oh, so, sweetheart. Apparently, yep. I need to have you and Justin on because we both you and get I look migraines. Just, so that's <laughs> we both get migraines. We both have a big nose. Uh, <laughs> we both have great hair. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we both have technological difficulties. Uh, yeah, I just I, my dad got around a lot. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying trash about your mom. You, I'm talking you, trash about my dad. <laughs> I just realized I implied that your mom's a hoe, but that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying I really to say my dad's you. a hoe. I really hope she doesn't watch this one. Does she watch my show? Well, I think she watched like the last two that I did with you. Mama so. Pavy, I did not imply that. I'm saying I didn't imply that. So I didn't even think about it. My mouth you're, just goes. You're so. digging your grave deeper. Yeah, as part of the show is my mouth just goes. I know you love your husband probably dearly, so or or at least aren't that annoyed with him. So it's probably been a few years. Um yeah, so no judgment about the nose. Mine is pretty huge. I'm not I'm comfortable with my nose. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sure Ryan knows about his nose. It's not a secret. Yeah, I love my schnoz. It's all good. <laughs> Sniffing out springtails. Um that got real weird. Again, it's a weird episode. Uh, again, Miss Pavey, I can't apologize enough. Thank you for letting me have your son on the show. Um, I know he's almost 20 now. He's the man, ostensibly. Um, how how giant are the springtails? Uh, the giant ones are like not even, I guess, a, not even a pinky nail, right? They're still pretty the, the small. Ones in, the ones in New York are like a thumbnail, I'm pretty sure. That's ridiculous. The ones, uh, the ones in Europe... Uh, Tetradontiflora bilineensis or something like that. They're or something as, like that, yeah. They're literally, oh, the cat wants in. They're literally called the giant springtails. Like, they actually have a common name. Um, oh, here's something cool. They live, they only, in the wild, they only live in mountain forests. So, in okay. culture, in captivity, so the, they, they've they evolved for cool temperatures. Okay. So, in captivity, people are having the best success keeping them in their fridge. In like a culturing, fridge? Culturing, putting the culture in a fridge. Wow, that's funny. I was thinking about 
getting another mini fridge, uh, if I could find one, like giving it away or something, uh, for ants and stuff for brumation. So, um, that would be kind of cool to keep them, but then you'd never see them anyway. You'd have to make that step to go, but I feel like I'd forget about them. Well, those uh, guys are like ooh. a pain now. Those ones are, they're, oh. they're actually, um, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind about that. All right. Um, are they a weird color, or is it just a? They're big. They're they're just, they're black. They're black. Okay. And well, oh, look it up, man. Just look up uh, and screen share a giant spring tr giant springtail. They look like isopods. They're actually pretty incredible, and they'll definitely they'll definitely be entering the U.S. within the next couple of years. There's a few, at least a few people in Europe culturing them. So. All right, let's pirate some images here. Let's um, let's pirate some images and see what we got here. All right, uh, where's that giant springtail? Here we go. Is it? Yep, oh, it's this guy. Right. Yeah, Tetradontiflora or something. Yeah, don't they don't they look pretty crazy? Kind of. They do look like a giant isopod or a tiny isopod. Not a even tiny ice isopod. I mean, there's isopods smaller than them, so that's wild. Oh yeah, but uh. Parvis is smaller than a Venezuelo. Um, this this one might be a Parvis, actually. Um, this might be the one that's smaller, although it looks more like a Parasay. Um, Paracai. Sorry, that was for Russ. When Russ watches this later, then he'll know. Um, I think that's cool. I didn't realize they look like. Do you have those in culture or no? No, uh... I have dead ones in my freezer, so I've at least got to see them with my own eyes, and they're 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 big and they're really cool looking. Now, can they survive in a in a not refrigerator temperature, or that's just for good success? Um, I I know one person who's uh who didn't keep them in their fridge, and she said that uh, they're not doing too good. <laughs> just, okay. So doing. definitely want to keep them in the fridge most time. Yeah. Um, I feel like they would make excellent feeders for like young frogs and stuff. Uh, um, they, they actually don't breed very fast though. They, oh, that sucks. What I've heard is the population barely grows. Like when the when the new generation reaches sexual maturity, the old generation dies off. But who knows? Wow. I mean, I mean, we'll learn a lot more about them as they are in, in culture more, and that's. Citizen science. Boom! So. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Uh, and I feel like a lot of people are recording their stuff a lot more, too, like when they have multiple um, enclosures and whatnot. Like Wally has a video out right now talking about how he holds, or it's going to be out any day. The QR uh, code stuff? I think so, where he's talking about taking care of 500 yeah, enclosures yeah. at a time. I'm looking forward to watching that one. Actually. Yeah, so that one's going to be really good, and that'll have like he keeps spreadsheet on spreadsheets. He's got spreadsheets about his spreadsheets, so I really, he has that I, information. I really want to mimic him there. That's that's very that's very yeah. smart. And there's a lot of guys in the hobby that are in the hobbies. I say the hobby for like every exotic animal keeper is the hobby, um, yeah. but that's kind of what we do here. Um, but every everyone keeps crazy notes. I have. My wife's making fun of me because I brought my aunt notebook uh, to church the other day because I didn't, I was bored and I was like, all right, I'm going to put notes on my new colonies or whatever and see how they're doing. Um, bought one of those digital thermometers that you can aim, you know, mm. shoots the laser out or whatever uh, for the colonies and for, I'm using it for everything that I have to see, okay, what's the temperature here? What's the temperature there? How many ants are here? How many ants are there? You know what I mean? So I can see where the isopods, where, what's their temperature like? Um, cause I'm working with keeping some of them on warmer, um, some of like desert species on a warmer, uh, like a heat cable underneath instead of just being like right now it's like 64 degrees in this basement. That's why I have this jacket on. So yeah. have you, uh, have you seen, have you seen the, uh, the red spring tails that people have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, those are from Thailand and, uh, everyone that I know who has them breeding really well, they like have them in their reptile room like set to 80, 82 degrees. Oh, wow. And okay. There's me. I mean, I started with over a hundred of them and they're just slowly dying off. And I realized my house is 67 degrees. Yeah. Uh, and then I talked to, <coughs> I talked to someone else who actually, 
who actually experimented with like fluctuating the temperature and he's like yeah room room temp they got sluggish they lost some of their color vibrancy but then you bump them up to the, the low 80s and okay. they thrive they get really active and really bright red and uh that species is actually probably uh not even described yet because i i've scoured columbola.org looking for some stuff and at, at the very least it's not uh, photographed like documented okay. photograph yet and uh yeah that that's one of them that i sent to the guy in poland so let's hope that he actually got them in the polish customs didn't just like incinerate the package <laughs> They're just like, what's this? Tiny little bugs and vials of liquid? Okay, it's probably some kind of I, bomb. I tried to be I tried to be thorough. Like I declared what was inside the package and followed like the guidelines. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but who knows? Uh but yeah, if they make it to him in good shape, because I also don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to shipping animals preserved in ethanol. But then he'll take a look, and then I've got some pretty damn good uh, pictures of them. So if we can get the species level ID, then we'll we'll be able to make a pretty cool. I think you posted guy. a few cool pictures of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Justin's sure. got a question about this. So. Um... Uh yeah yeah I can <clears throat> see the screen. They're uh, they're just fine at room temp. I mean every single one of my springtails are breeding. Prolifically at 67, besides the reds who are just slowly dying off and slug, sluggish. So, uh, there, there might be a benefit in upping the temp, and we'll see. Uh, when I get more resources at my disposal, space especially. I'm, well, I, I would, um, my recommendation would be, uh, because it's worked for me, I have two of them and they were like $15 each. Is I got like a you can get whatever, almost whatever length you want, but they have heat cables. Um, and you can oh, put yeah. like a corner or whatever, a corner of their little thing under the heat cable or put the heat cable under it. Uh, and then you're good or lay your cat next to their enclosure. Uh, so he stays warm, but the heat cable, you can kind of put it where you want and then you can adjust where the enclosure is. And I feel like for a springtail, you don't know. He loves you a lot. He's showing you that. <laughs> That's how my cat's like, I love you, bro. Here's my bee hole. <laughs> um, so the heat cable is going to be your best friend because you can adjust and then that little like the gun thermometer is like another 20 bucks or something you're into tools um, we just have a cat tail popping in the screen <laughs> from the top I'm surprised my cat's not down here right now he's staying upstairs after all times I just squirted him for being in the way um, yeah so those are two things I would recommend for you as far as gear. So your, your heat cable and then your, uh, cause it maintains, mine tends to maintain like an 87 degree temp, which sounds like a lot, but it's not, Is it's it, producing are you it able in a very small down? area. What's that? Are you able to turn it down? Oh, okay. I, I think so you like, can have a thermostat for it, but I, when you just plug it in and it goes. So, but the first so like, like two feet of mine don't produce any heat at all. So the first foot or so, foot or two i have two 10 footers um and it doesn't produce heat at all so uh you kind of that's good actually because you don't want it going from the floor like laying on your floor hot you know what i mean um but mine tends to run around 87 the actual cable but you're only putting it you know what i mean it's like thin it's like this so like the room temp will even it out towards the the rest of the oh okay it's yeah. about this wide it's a little bit thicker than this so um yeah, your room temp, but you can really, you have to watch it at first because you can really overheat things fast, especially the small containers that like you would have your springtails in, like something small and enclosed could heat it up really quick. So you have to kind of watch. But I imagine those red ones would be fine on there almost no matter what, if you vented it a little bit. Yeah, um, I mean, they, they live in Thailand. It's probably hot as shit. Yeah, yeah. I Maybe have not it, constantly. Uh, I have it saved somewhere the exact city where they were collected, but uh, they're not that okay. interesting to me because they're not U.S. native, so technically they're kind of like, and they weren't imported legally, so they're kind of like illegal, so they're more like pets to me. I'm not oh, illegal. All right. I'm not actually ever going to be like shipping them around. But, yeah, uh, for now. I uh, I want to take an expedition someday. So <clears throat> 
in the next few years to the west coast where there's observations of u.s native reds so I guess some oh of an expedition in america okay okay yeah i thought you were going to pull a ben quintanas and just head off to thailand discover some species run around the jungle well maybe if i can figure out the loopholes that he uses to actually get them here legally but yeah i don't know what like loopholes it is he just goes through and gets all his paperwork in order so i, I don't know if he knows a guy to help him facilitate that but um I, i've heard that i've heard some speculation but uh i don't really know enough to be yeah on it, I guess. yeah no right um i'm sure he would share some information with you like he's pretty forthcoming and he's not doing springtail so as long as you're not like going out there to haul in all the jupiters that you can find or whatever um, which state on the West Coast are you like? What area are you headed to for these springtails? Do you want to find? Uh, so I, I've seen some iNatural. This is where iNaturalist comes in handy too, because you can like check certain areas of the map. Uh, California, specifically Northern California. But then uh, I have a friend in Oregon who he has like a field guide, and okay. in the field guide there was pictures of red springtails, and. Uh, Hopefully he can find that field guide for me so I can take a look at it. But so, and I'm thinking either Oregon or Northern California. Oregon would be cool because they have the temperate rainforest. So that's probably like the highest density of springtails anywhere on the continent. Oh God, yeah, everything's covered in moss. Like besides they'd be everywhere, like Mexico. Mexico's pretty. Mexico yeah. has some pretty awesome areas, but yeah, one of yeah. An expedition to the west coast, either Oregon or Northern California. I'm gonna get to a temperate rainforest. Like to be in a rainforest and not worried about like slinky leeches coming after you. Um, that's that's like my nightmare after watching jaguars. Survivor or whatever. <laughs> What's that? Or jaguars? <laughs> nah, jaguars. I'd be like, oh, I get it. A jaguar is gonna kill you. But there was a like some kind of Survivor show, like The Greatest Race or something. And they were going through the jungle, and they had these leeches. They were in there for days. And these, they look like slinkies. They would walk on land and go like their butt would hit and then their head and then their butt and then their wow. head. And they'd come after you. They'd be climbing up you. What? Um, yeah. Right. And this guy's like, I felt something in my shorts. And it like, he saw as the end of it just went up his pee hole. So it just went into his urethra. And he was like, well, what do I do? And the guide was like, uh, it'll engorge itself and then it'll come out. So you'll be uh. fine. Or it'll suffocate and you'll just pee it out. But well, you should be all right. And I was like, I, uh, should be? Should be? <laughs> you'll just pee out its rotted. Yeah, rotted like I would rotted. cry that whole that whole time. Like, oh, why did this happen? I, uh, um, not good. I was I was listening to a podcast and they the topic of the the, the catfish in the Amazon that swim up people's pee holes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess that they're attracted to urea and uh, fish gills excrete yeah. urea. And they sit in the fish gill and shred yeah, it with those little spines, like shred it and then drink the blood as their little vampires. Are your yeah. also have urea? <laughs> yeah, so people squirt out a little pee and they're like, wait a minute. That seems like some pretty good looking gills over there. That's some strong urea. Hell yeah, beetle guy. I hope you can, uh, I hope you can find some. Who says Oregon? Did you say Oregon? He said Oregonian or something like that. It's Oregon. Oregon. We're getting pronoun we're getting a lot of pronunciation correction this episode. I might delete this one. I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah that's <laughs> bullshit. This might have to be unlisted. <laughs> Just deleted. Um, it's only ever happened once. Hardly anybody noticed. One episode had to go. Um, <laughs> I got I got a little upset, but it had to go. Uh, Kendra oh, I, is yeah. the fish. Oh, Kendra is the fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm sad. Vic doesn't come down the show anymore. He was my Google guy. Justin does pretty good though. Um, yeah. Is there any other springtail information you want to give out? Like, what's what's the new hotness in the hobby? Are globulars coming out? Are you? How are your uh, your cultures going? Like, are they blowing up? Like, what's the what's the story? What can we expect from Springtails US? I saw your announcement about surprises on the new website. Well, I'm going to keep that to myself. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, like, I was just getting into, like, how your cultures are doing. I'm not trying to get you to log out the surprises. Yeah. Even though people do that on the show, I'm just saying. Um, but really, like, how are your cultures doing? Because I know you kind of are kind of getting back into it. 
yeah, yeah, my cultures are doing oh. great. I'm, uh, I'm actually trying to gravitate towards uh, like wholesale supply, like pet stores and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you're. That's where you're really gonna reach the public, like people who have never heard of springtails before. You, you put some oranges in front of their face, and you're like, holy shit! Like, this this crazy cool thing is from Florida. Like, yeah. So, uh, so I've been uh, expanding the hell out of my culture, <laughs> and just trying to breed them up. I mean, I had one guy who just my friend, my friend in Oregon actually took eighteen thousand of my <laughs> springtails. So that made me real. And he's like, yeah, that's not enough. If you could. If you could send me like three times that amount, I would take it. It's not enough. What is he doing with these springtails? He supplies pet stores in Oregon. So okay, all right, um, that's fair. That's kind of like a flipper mode, though. Like, dude, hold on to eighteen thousand and grow them. They don't like the regular ones. The regular little white ones they breed so fast. If you have them on a good culture, he doesn't have the time for it. Those. He doesn't but, have uh, time to put stuff in a bucket of dirt and let it go. Give me a break, man. He's the busiest person I know. Like, she is insanely busy. But yeah, uh, I, the the new hotness is gonna be arid spring toast for sure. I'm working with three fast breeding arid species, and we'll finally have a good cleanup crew for like dry reptiles and stuff. As long as you can provide like a little cup of wet sphagnum for them to lay their eggs in and regulate their moisture, then we'll finally have a species for uh, like. The, the more dry reptiles and then there's also another uh species that i'm working with uh i haven't figured out the species name yet that's going to require some microscopy but uh and they're they're one millimeter and they can't jump and they breed like no other like they're, they're probably like uh, faster breeding than those common white ones and I think that they're gonna make. I think that they're gonna be great for people who are kind of skittish about springtails because they're like jumpy and stuff. And these ones like are slow and can't jump. So yeah, there, there's a lot of cool stuff in the works. I guess I'm gonna kind of keeping quiet about it, waiting yeah. for waiting for more results. <clears throat> of course, man. Yeah. Of course, I'm not trying to out your secrets tonight. It's cool. It'd be cool if you did, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything that big to share. <laughs> Every I don't I love it when a guest all of a sudden is like, hey, I'm gonna share this with you. Like it's in the middle of the show. And I'm like, what? It could be anything. It could be like a Pop Tart recipe. Like, okay, cool, man. For those of you that want a Pop Tart recipe, you can do this tomorrow. Get raspberry Pop Tarts, hard to find. Find them, put them in the toaster, get them, you know, a little crispy, a little dark. While you're doing that, take out a Hershey bar, a whole Hershey bar, take the wrapper off. As soon as you get those pop tarts out, make yourself a little sandwich. You're welcome. <clears throat> it's the best damn thing ever. It's the best thing I ever put in my mouth. Sounds That's for real. Like the worst thing you ever put in your gut, but it it's like fine it. for your gut. But if you have diabetes, like don't eat it. <laughs> You'll die. You will die. If you don't have diabetes, you will get diabetes. So, I mean, it's a risk, but you to me, yeah. Where's I don't know point? how I don't have diabetes. The way I eat, I, I don't know how it's that's a miracle. Um, they're just tails, I guess springtails that don't spring. <laughs> springtails that don't spring, I guess they're well, they just don't have tails. tails either. They don't uh, have tails. The reason why they're called springtails is because their organ it's called a furca, it's like yeah. stuck on their bellies and then it yeah. flips open. And when it's open, it looks like a tail hanging out the back. So, springtails. These guys don't have that, so they're just blank. They don't have <laughs> – they're not springs or tails. So their tails are under their body, so you're not looking at their tail when you're looking at that long-ass rump that they have. Ass rump? Anyway, um, it seems a little redundant, but um, that's just an abdomen, essentially. That's not a tail. So the tail is tucked up underneath. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or the furcula, what would you call it? Percolator? The Furcola, Furca, I think either one of those are acceptable. It's time for the Furcolator. Yeah. It's time for the Furcolator. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. My new theme song. You just dude, gave me a good idea. Dude, <laughs> we should call you the Furcolator. Hold on. Let me get on this just for the last part of the show. Um. Yeah, what else are we sharing? Oh, that's not right. 
I can't spell. I, I, I swear, even with my glasses, no good. There you go. I fixed you. I fixed your name, so you're good now. <clears throat> oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I get, oh, I thought of one more thing to share, I guess, that right. I have in the works. Uh, good pen, by the way. Those are dope pens. The, uh, the Sharpie gel pens? Yes, they're so yep. good. Oh, they're the best. I've almost killed this one. My first pen in my life that I actually didn't lose before killing it. Oh, anyways, uh, you know, like the tropical pinks, tropical white. Yeah, pink? yeah. Uh, I, I have a species that I isolated from some commercial compost, a.k.a. like compost that I bought at Home Depot. Okay. And uh, I took that compost and I put it in a bin and I uh, fed it some food and uh, three species of springtail and a shit ton of mites popped up out of it. And I isolated all three. But one of those species is uh, really cool in that it's like a, it's a multicolored species. So uh, I'm not sure if it's sexual dimorphism. I don't think it is because of the sheer variety of colors. But they range from like a subtle orange to like a subtle purple. I call it kind of like an earth tone rainbow. That's uh, wild. Yeah. And I think that that species could replace the tropical pinks in a lot of uh, instances. They're they're a lot more appealing looking. They, they don't look like little white hairy gremlins that swarm your isopods they i'm i'm not sure if they swarm isopods yet because i haven't tested it okay. but uh, at least they're at least they're uh, pretty looking <laughs> so yeah that's another cool one that i have in the works i like I that the percolator <laughs> the buddy cop movie it's not a buddy cop it's a buddy uh amateur naturalist um yeah i'm down I'm down. We'll make that movie. Two Jeff brothers Hart. separated by decades <laughs> meet finally. Realize they're clones. Maybe that's it. You're just a clone. Um, not just like a better clone. Um, no, man, I think we're good. And now I have to go butter pop tarts. So, yeah. Um, guys, if you're not playing Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, I know it's like a five year old game, but you should be playing it because. <laughs> It's super dope. I'm having so much fun. Although I think my guy got um, violated the other night. And so, yeah, I stopped by this hillbilly's house and like an idiot, he's like, hey, come on in here. I got food. And I went in his <laughs> cabin and he knocked me out. And then I kind of was like, uh, and he said, yeah, isn't it better when we're friends? Now, then you pass out again and wake up somewhere off in the woods. I was like, did I just, did that just happen? Uh, that game's no joke. They don't mess around. Um, <clears throat> I don't know where that was coming from, but yeah, I'm going to do that <laughs> after this, after I feed everybody their worms. Um, but guys, get on the websites. We're going to post the links. Well, I'm going to post the links again in the description right after this. Ryan, thank you so much for giving us those links and that information. Um, guys, check out U.S. Springtails. You've got your clay. You've got a great resource for information. Um, if Ryan doesn't have the species to, to find for you, he can find you somebody who does or tell you where to find them yourself. Um, yeah, he can help you sort through the information on iNaturalist or one of those websites. that's just, a, you saw the seven page scroll of blue links with Latin names that don't mean anything to non-Springtail people. Um, especially when Combalella Mella is the whole name for everybody. Um, <clears throat> Watch the video again. You'll see that. You'll see it was spelled right, right several times. <laughs> and that'll bump my numbers. So that'll be good. Um, Ryan, just, yeah, I don't know if Ryan is the spitting image. Uh, yeah, don't don't put that on him. He's not the spitting image of, of me. That's not good. Um, <laughs> Jedi saying that uh, James Cameron wanted to make that movie about us right before he was diagnosed with dementia. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how they'd find it like he's something's off with james cameron um but yeah check out the links um look for the can you post the the link or do you have the link for your lens that you could post in iso buddies in the facebook group yeah i could post it the amazon yeah. link or whatever yeah i usually carry it on my website but i'm out of stock and they're kind of expensive to buy in bulk so uh oh okay it's probably well, a shit move for me to add them to my website when I'm broke. 
because I ran out of stock pretty quickly and now I can't afford to get more. <laughs> well, then what do you charge? Like, if people can just find it on Amazon, like, what I do charge you charge? The same as Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, because you're buying them in bulk. I get it. I get but it. But yeah, I'll, I'll share the Amazon link. You don't have to. Share your own link. Get some pre orders. Get some pre orders. <laughs> and then, then you can afford it, right? All right. And then, and then we got to wait three months for them to get here from China. But, is that uh, how they? Is that how it is? It's a uh, Apex is a Chinese company, and it it took yeah it took three months for the first batch of lenses to get here. So then it might, it might uh, be a little while before they're back on the site. <laughs> oh my god, uh, that's not great. But no. they show up from Amazon in like three days. So I hate to say that I hate to undercut your business, but oh that's you know, fine. <laughs> I, I don't care. Amazon doesn't have springtails or calcified clay, so. There's the, there's the like balance right there, yeah, <clears throat> right. And you guys can get um, the the aspirator thing. Um, you can get all kinds of stuff, all kinds of like side supplies, oil, at... food, and and uh, I've got a pretty decent isopod supply section too. Leaf litter and uh, calcium supplements, limestone. Uh, See what I'm talking about? There I'm you still... go. <laughs> I still got to give you my recipe for. Um, hides for isopod hides that are edible um oh, oh we didn't we talk about that at like a narbc or something forever? yeah i've thrown the idea out like a million times uh and then i used your clay most of it in the in the he-man tank over here so um i don't have enough left to make prototypes but yeah it would basically be calcium clay with some filler and then make a hide probably cocoa core or something i don't know something stupid leaf litter you can do a million different things and then you press it into a mini muffin pan not all the way and mm -hmm. then just give it some. and then it's hides it's clay it's probably got leaves in it whatever yeah. you want to put in it you put whatever you want in there yeah so and they would eat it but yeah maybe not make it too delicious <laughs> so, <laughs> right? keep it on the, dry, on the dry side of your setup i promise not to die this week guys um, I'm gonna cough for about a half an hour after this. I'll sell you uh oh uh, I can't think of the word. I'll send you a camera lens. I will. My prices are not gonna be Amazon prices, <laughs> but I will autograph it. I will uh, right across the lens. I'll autograph it so you think of ISO buddies every time. Um, but yeah, check out those links, check out Ryan's stuff. Um, check out where you guys can look for your own, you know, uh your own. Citizen science and, and let's co collaborate. Let's let's get our information together. Let's sort things out. So there's so much going on. I, I'm I have to say this in closing. I am kind of pissed that uh, springtails are getting so much scientific recognition. Like they all have scientific names and like you said, hardly any common names. But isopods, it's the exact opposite. Like we have so few scientific names and so many common names that are just essentially bullshit it seems like uh <laughs> most people like especially the people like importing them and stuff are just in it for the money like it doesn't even seem like they love the animals itself because i don't even think that but i think they're coming in or if fast. They care about science or anything i think it's the science that's lacking but I, I definitely think they care about the animals like i know some of the importers there are definitely some like flippers that i hate that get them in like sketchily um, and they're damaging to the hobby, but there's definitely guys that are doing it right and hopefully are getting some information on them. I think it's a matter of, I don't know how there's like more springtail scientists than there are iSpot scientists, but what I understand is there are like two or three legit like isopods categorizing dudes on the planet and they're almost dead, like, like they're 85 years old. So it's, uh, it's not a great time to have all these species come out because everybody's into it now. So of course we're going to find them. <clears throat> so, and it's not like uh, reptiles. It's not like the uh, ball pythons where you just breed a new morph and it's just a ball python. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some great people though, like blast cat and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like blast cat. All right. There's a shout out. There's one guy. There's one guy. Oh, there's um, more. I'm I can't. Kidding. I'm kidding. Brain farting. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, something's in the air this week. I swear. Um, but Hey, thanks for coming on again. It's always a treat. I know we had off to a rocky start and, and that kind of screwed us both up a little bit, 
Rocky mentally. Stark, but, uh, we got back on track towards the 45 so. minute mark. <laughs> I think we're trying to learn stuff too. And we had Rick from Ophi, <laughs> Rick from Ophi showed up as soon as things settled down. So, yeah, um, I think I'll, that uh, I think we lost our structure, but in in the end, we covered just about everything. So, whew. this show's not known for its structure, so that worked out pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> not my strong point. Thank you for having but, me. Anytime, literally it's anytime. I'm going to put all your links. Thank you for the links, too. I'm going to put those in the description and um, in the down there part. So, um, all right, brother. Peace out. All right. Peace out. All right. Thanks for coming. Ryan went through a lot to be with us. You guys saw that mess. Um, he was stressing hard. You saw how red his face was. Go back to, like, the 20-minute mark and when he comes on and you see his crazy red face. It's the best. Um, I tease. I tease him because he has to tell you he's a little brother. Him and Kyle. Kyle Bunch. Um, and my bro Rick is here tonight too, which is a real treat. Um, yeah, so guys, get out there, do the homework, do the legwork, get outside, go see some ice pods, go see some springtails. Right now, you could look for snow fleas, little black specks bouncing around on the snow. Um, they're having a great time. See you, Ken. Tell Ophi I said hi. We'll see you Sunday. <clears throat> I'm going out for lunch with Rick and his family on Sunday. Um, yeah, so go do the work, guys. Thanks for coming. As always, I, I love my audience. You guys are the best. We're slowly growing little by little. So we can like, share, comment. Leave a comment. See what you liked about the episode. Say what you didn't like about the episode. I don't give a shit. Say whatever you want. Um, I comment. I respond to every comment on the video on the videos. All three. All three of the comments we've gotten so far since we started this channel. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been wonderful comments and wonderful uh, responses, let me tell you. Uh, we also had the Patreon. Again, we added a dollar thing, which is, if Patreon is mad at me because it's like undercutting myself, but whatever, man. Every little bit helps. So it occurred to me that if I could get 100 people that could give up a buck a month, uh, you know, we could do all right. We could do some things on this show that, that we get out and into the world and do stuff. You can make suggestions, see what you want to see. Um, it's not being greedy. It's trying to promote the show without using up my own budget. So pretty stable. Yep, I'm pretty stable above 300. I think we hit 315 this morning. I was very excited. I think it dropped to 314 right before we went live. But uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you. I'm very excited. Next week, Justin and I, Green Jedi Monkey and I, are going to roast to the community. So a little bit. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, we're going to have one of my favorite topics, stereotypes. We're going to get into that. It's, it's very playful, okay? Not trying to offend anybody. I want you to laugh at yourself is what I want you to do. Laugh at yourself first, or the fact that we're spot on with these stereotypes. Um, we're going to roast people that name common names. That's two things. We're going to roast common names of ice pods. Um, if you have a suggestion, message it. Comment in the in the video below or in the, in the video. Comment in the comments. So, uh, yeah, we're going to roast some stuff. We're going to have a lot of fun because Justin is in charge of the puns, and I'm in charge of the actual comedy. So it'll be a good time. And then after that, we've got a couple videos set up. We're going to talk about monitors and uh, isopods and crazy stuff. We're going to talk about mantids. Um, we've got some mantids finally. So we've been waiting two years to get a mantis person on the show. So that's going to happen. But uh, I love you guys. Have a great week. If you're up in the Midwest, drive safe. The snow is a little stupid right now for us. Sorry. So have a good one, guys. 